Hello, Bake, and welcome to part two of the 10,000 subscriber Q&A video. <laughs> Sit down, relax, and enjoy my yapping while I perform mundane tasks in the background. What is your favorite copycat outfit that you have ever created and worn? Montclair. Really like the Montclair puffer gown jacket and the Taylor Swift dress. Because it was like, okay, I'm doing this. I have no idea how it's going to go and I have no idea if it's going to work. It, it worked in the end, so I really like those. And I, actually, the Hope Scope pants. I was so scared of that project. The duck bars? It took so long to make. Oh, I'm proud of that one. Which one do you wear more often? The strawberry dress. I transformed it to a skirt and I really like it. And actually, Taylor Swift, I've been wearing it a lot as well. <laughs> I wish I could wear more of the very fancy and pretty dresses I make, but I have nowhere to go. <laughs> From all the projects you have made, which one was the most difficult? The most difficult? Mm, I think the most difficult one was this social distancing dress, because I was not able to get the shape I wanted. It was very boxy and weird. I still don't think it was a good dress. It got, really got on my nerves. Still pains me to see that. And that hoop skirt from hell. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Those were the most difficult ones, but I was not able to fix them, so that's for another time. <laughs> it haunts my dreams. If you could buy any fabric regardless the cost, what would it be? If I could, I would go to the company Waynesboro Weaving and I would have them weave this fabric for me so I can make this dress because I am obsessed with it. I am really obsessed with it. No, two dresses I'm obsessed with. This one and this worth gown. So I would go to them and just like, please make me this fabric. Ah. Ooh, at least I know it's very good now. <laughs> Sorry. Which celebrity would you like most to design for and what would you create for them to wear on the red carpet? Ooh. I think Lady Gaga. I would definitely want to do something for Lady Gaga. Or Katy Perry. Katy Perry is also has a very interesting fashion sense. But what? I don't know. Something crazy for sure. What percent of your daily wardrobe did you make? My inside to house wardrobe, 0%. Because I just wear pajamas. My outside wardrobe, I would say I made, I think, 80 to 90% of it. I think that's right. How do you come up with ideas on what to make? They all come to me in a dream. They just pop in my brain and then I have the feeling I need to do it. How do you keep your creativity and enthusiasm? <laughs> I don't know. I, I always have a lot of energy. The enthusiasm comes from there. But the creativity, sometimes I do have blocks. This this month is a very, very blocked month for me. I do have a lot of ideas in the shower though. How do you get past creative blocks or like lulls? When you need to finish a project but you just don't want to. <laughs> Example, right there on the table in this mess, I have the Moschino coat that I've been battling with for three weeks already and I can't find the strength to finish it because of all the tailoring involved. It's something I never did before. I'm totally overwhelmed with it and I'm postponing it. <laughs> I just need to find the strength to finish it and I just, I can't, just can't. So it will stay there until I get fed up or the deadline really like, okay, this is the deadline. I need to do it and then I will do it. But violence is sometimes involved. If you put a coat on and reach into the pockets and forgot you had to put anything in there, what would it bring you joy to discover in the pockets? My wedding rings, because I lost them and I still haven't found them. <laughs> oh god. And aside from that, seeds. Because this is a very random thing. Because everywhere I go, when I travel, if there is a plant or something, okay. I just seed because I want to plant things in my garden. And then I forget about them and I always put them in my coat or somewhere. And then sometimes I find seeds and then like, oh, I was there and I did that. And here's the seed and I forgot about it. It's probably dead, but yay, yay. I'm, I'm not even joking. This is the car, my side. So I got this. Somewhere, somewhere in Germany. And this one as well. <laughs> they were at an Airbnb. God, everything's so dirty. What's your favorite flower? Magnolia. <laughs> Will you ever consider going back to school for something clothing related? I wanted to, uh, but then I realized I have the time or energy to go back to school. I really, I really did love going to school. I think I'm happy where I'm now. I don't think I would go back to school. Not officially. Like I do learn a lot by doing and looking other people do some other stuff, but I don't think I would be officially in school again. I lost all my bobbins. Um, excuse me? What? How? This can't be right. Okay, so I lost them. I still have one here. They might be with my wedding ring somewhere. They went out to party. 
You said you were a ballet dancer. Can we please, please, please see pictures and videos? I wish I could show you, but I lost everything. Oh my god. Yes, I danced. I danced for a long time. I started dancing with six, started with jazz and tap dancing and everything. I really, really liked it. And then when I was uh, 13, I started ballet, like the classical training. And I fell in love with it. I wanted to go professional. I managed to almost do it until my hips collapsed. I don't have any pictures anymore, any videos, nothing. Because uh, my computer exploded, literally, in Brazil. I lost all the data and I don't have anything to show you. I'm so sorry. I really, really liked it. I wish I could dance again. I can't. Uh, Can you make a costume and dance in it for us? I'll try. <laughs> this is one of the times that one of those hacks could have worked, you know? <laughs> what fashion rule or trend you'll never follow? Seeing how why your fashion taste is, I'm kind of curious. Oh, my, my fashion sense is having no sense at all. I wear what I like, but pants, leggings with newspaper print on it. No, Never. no. It's coming back. I hate it. No. Will that be a sushi kimono? Maybe. Maybe. Soon. I got more questions to answer. Let's see. What's the best sandwich? Is cheeseburger a sandwich? I love cheeseburgers. I could live on cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers. Ah. I'm just curious how a Brazilian girl ended up in Germany making hilariously amazing content in English. Oh, thank you so much. I came here 10 years ago. 11. <gasps> I came here in 2012 for my master's degree and then I just ended up staying. And one day I was just like, okay, I'm bored of this. I need to release the bacon. So I started my channel and in English because English is closer to my mother tongue as German is. So for me, it's easier to think and express things in English than it is in German. What designers or fashion era inspire your own style and sewing? I, I don't have a full era of inspiration or a single designer. I'm really drawn to the crazy, so the weirdest looking, the better for me. But one of the eras I like the most, like for daily use, is the 50s and 60s, because I really like the tapered waist and the flared skirts. I really like this feminine look, but it's not that I constrain myself to one of those things, you know? So I recently was giving a cat because a family member couldn't, couldn't anymore for the time being. What was your biggest struggle introducing both your pets? We didn't have much of a struggle. The cats were already older ladies when sushi came. They were curious at first. I didn't the do slow introduction. It was really, I just let the dog loose Oops. and see what happened. Thank God they didn't freak out. I don't know if this is the right way to do. I don't think it is, but I know the cats and I know that they would not freak out. They are very curious cats. So it worked. Musli doesn't like sushi at all. Musli hits sushi. Sushi is terrified of her. But Chili is like, okay, I accept you being here. Just stay on your lane. I'll stay in mine. You're allowed to kiss me three times. And the fourth, I will whoop your Yes. How much fabric have you designed yourself for your outfits? For my outfits? Oh, I designed a lot of fabrics for fun and I had some of them still printed here and as much as I can I try to wear them. But I can't give you a number. Do you knit, crochet or needle bind? Or have plans to learn? I can knit and crochet but very slowly. I'm not an expert. I can do only like basic stitches. <laughs> kind of lacking in that area, but yes, I want to learn it. And I really want to learn how to needle bind. I find it so pretty and so interesting. I, I want that, I want that. What are your other hobbies? I love painting with watercolors. I would say that is my other hobby, but my job is my hobby. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> Have you made any plans to make a bacon dress inspired by Gaga's meat dress? I will never tell. Ah, uh, would you look at that? It's a little wonky, but I think it turned out very cute. You can wear it as a belt as well. What kind of projects and designs do you hope you to accomplish in the future? Ooh, I have so many I want to make, but so little time. So little time. What cameras, editing software, microphone and whatever else do you use to produce the videos? I have two cameras. I have a Sony... What is the name of this? <laughs> a Sony 4K Handycam whatever blah blah with a Rode microphone on top. I have the small Sony camera for tabletop and for streaming. And I edit on DaVinci Resolve. I have another Rode microphone on the computer for voiceovers and also for the streaming. And a lot of clamps and arms and stands and everything so I can have the different angles without having to move much because I'm lazy. Have you had to deal with icky people in your comments? Oh, yes, I do. I have very a very strict filter on YouTube that will filter all the nasty things right away so I don't see them. Oh my god, yes. Oh, you should not feed the trolls. You should not be angry or you should not be... I, I pour so much of myself inside 
side of everything I do kind of feel personal when someone comes and says, oh, that, that sucks. Like, oh, thank you. I suck. Uh, thanks for letting me know. I already knew that. 99.9% .9 of the community is so nice to me. It's, I can't complain. I can't complain. Sometimes we do have a Karen or two in the comment section and I have allowed myself to release the hounds on one person a year and that makes me very happy. You don't want to get in the nasty side of me. What are you sewing business venture goals for 2023? Definitely break even. I need to break even this year. Last year I had the problem that the tax people told me I should cannot have so much loss because I'm just buying materials, buying materials, but I don't have profit. For 2023, I was able to have a little bit of profit from, from selling the patterns and the fabrics from YouTube itself. I was not able to break even. Oh my God, I was not able to break even. So my goal for 2023 is break even. You know those people that said, oh, I need to win the lottery, but they never play. Yeah, this is what happens with me and my things because I need to sell stuff, but I never market them anymore. Anywhere. Been here since they will dress. Yes. Oh my god. That was a good one Who would you like to do a collab with on YouTube the most from YouTube in general? I think I would love to collab with Sophia I really really like her and her content or Naomi John. But we're not in the same niche So I don't think that that would be possible. However, in my niche, I think I would like to collab with Rachel Maxi because she's so cute. Is she so cute? Rachel, hit me up. Let's do something interesting. Are there more projects where you would do with the Bacons in the future? Yes, there will be. Oh my God, so excited. <laughs> Why are we Bacon? So the Bacon started when, I, I don't know. I started saying release the Bacon because my Bacon, 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 and then caught that I started calling you Bacons, but it was like so out of nowhere. I don't have a real reason for that. It's like, we need to release the bacon and I don't make pork by the way, so <laughs> it's not because you are crispy or something. So just my way of telling, like, be yourself. Release the bacon and then you are the bacons that need to be released. I really need to think about this. I have no idea why. <laughs> Which is something from other YouTubers. Yes, I, I really liked doing the YouTubers thing series. I need to continue that. It was fun. <laughs> Z Frank would be a very good one. The bebes. All the bebes. Who's your favorite YouTuber friend who lives in Sweden and has a three-week-old baby? Your baby is not three weeks. Old. It's already 18 and it's ready to move out of the house. It's huge. The baby is huge. I need your help to reach 100,000 bacons and to make the 100,000 pom pom dress. I'm calling on all you bacons to send me your pom poms to my, to my PO box. Any color, any yarn. But the pom poms need to be one inch in diameter or two and a half centimeters because we are making Queen Elizabeth's coronation dress for me to wear in London in June of this year. We have five months. <laughs> Yeah. Help me, please help me. Send me pom poms and tell your friends about the channel so we can release 100,000 bacons on time. Yes, now back to the questions. <laughs> When are you going to do a project with your vintage machines? Ugh, soon! I have so many! I have one, two, three, four, five sewing machines to unbox. I still have to work on the leather sewing machine, the big one. Uh, I still was not able to repair it. But after The Witcher, I decided not to do it. <coughs> it was insane. It really got on my nerves. Do you ever design make manswear? I did sew men's stuff once, but no, not, no, no. I should go back to men's manswear. Do you keep a swatch book or similar with a record of all your fabrics? And if so, what info do you make a note of? I do have swatches for the projects and they are divided like in this thing. So I have a, I keep a sample of the fabric and the patterns and everything together. I make notes of how much I bought, of what the fabric is and where I got it. For what price? Do you keep a record of your projects? Yes, I do. But the other ones still don't have the swatch in the front. I need to add uh, them. But I didn't have the time or the energy to do it. This is sweet. This is a bit presumptuous, but if I'm lucky enough to be one of the winners and I get drawn for the sewing machine, could you either redraw another winner or donate it to somewhere local to you that does craft classes projects? Disadvantage people. I have three machines already and I fear divorce if another one enters the house. <laughs> yes, I will do that. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Unity to tab doesn't work on the YouTube iPad app. Puh. Emily asked how do I deal with shoulder and back pain from sewing? That's a biggie for me. I do stand up a lot. If I'm not in, on the machine, I do most of the work standing up. And I need to go back to sport, but I used to have a lot of exercises to strengthen back muscles, so I don't have pain. I have pain under my right shoulder blade. Don't know how or why that happens, because I'm left-handed, and there's nothing much that I'm doing with the, the right arm all the time, so I don't understand that kind of pain. And I do lay a lot on this acupressure 
pressure mat when I do have back pain and it's a lifesaver even for my migraines it's so good so I totally recommend you get one for you what's the most underrated tool that you think more people should use <laughs> well since I discovered it I think it would be the seam allowance gauge this is also my favorite keep of 2022 both of them they are amazing I, I use them all the time now and they're very underrated so how do you deal with frustrating sewing projects violence violence is always the answer yeah jokes aside it's really frustrating not doing things right and then redoing and redoing and redoing and then ruining and trying again starting don't be discouraged by that it's part of the process and take your time you don't need to be a fast sewist or a perfect one so do it on your time patience that i'm actually not allowed to talk about because i have none my secret is try not to be defeated by an inanimate object <laughs> this sounds ridiculous for me it's just, okay this is just a dress this is just a jacket this is just a something you, you will not defeat me i'm stronger than you are how would i suggest the beginner start sewing mm. just do it i started sewing by hand i didn't get a machine until i was 20 something and before that i sewn everything by hand studying pattern making and everything because i really like technical drawings you have to start from somewhere and my somewhere was hand sewing so i was hand sewing costumes for my dolls i was hand sewing pillows easy things and then i progressed onto more complicated things and i really really loved making traditional german costumes don't be overwhelmed by the advanced stuff like for example some of the things that i do here i know they can be daunting and sometimes even scary to start but those are not the projects you should start with <laughs> like start slow take your time get to know your tools get to know the craft and it will all develop from there and about the budget and i forgot to say you don't need to buy crazy amount when you're beginning if you're not sewing by hand you just need a simple machine don't go overboard a nice pair of scissors and some basic fabrics you don't need to go splurging in your first tries because you're going to mess up anyway so don't waste money and on expensive things do not buy one use only tools it's a waste of money i have a lot of those and i use them like once a year and it's just not worth it what is the best way to pattern for a body with a lot of bacon there are two ways to best pattern for a very bacony body if you are like me in which you have big boobs smaller waist and a thick behind i suggest when you go with the measurement of your bust and do the adjustments from there if you are all around a bigger person measure always the widest part of your body Body, being it the boobs the butt or the waist and then make the changes to fit if you are a very straight person but have has large boobs go with the measurement of your waist and then work a large bust adjustment into it because for my body type when i use the bust as a measurement i always need to taper a lot on the waist and the shoulders a little bit you always have to consider the things that make you make as little changes to a pattern as possible always consider the largest part unless you are skinny person with large boobs. Does that make sense? And work from a sloper. If you're not brave enough to, to make your own, get a ready pattern block in your size, make all of the adjustments, and then you can manipulate all the darts from that basic thing so you have the perfect garment. How to alter store-bought clothing to fit me better? I have a lot of body strangeness and nothing fits well. Could you do a series on the subject? Sure, I can try. I also don't buy many clothes that are ready to wear because I'm too lazy to alter them, but I always consider the boobage when buying something. If it is... If it's too tight on the tatas or the chicken wings and then it's almost impossible to alter that so making your own patterns or altering the patterns that already exist to fit your body go with the widest part of your body and work all of it there and drip it on yourself i'll try to explain this more more interestingly in video for you how to alter the slopers to fit someone nowhere near that size 177 meters tall and i find that all the slopers are several centimeters too short when i try to lengthen them it just sets out a domino chain of despair <laughs> like i have a short torso but longer legs so i always have to lengthen the skirts and reduce the length of the bodice part but if you have a longer torso and you also need to adjust that take the bodice part Measure two and a half to three inches from the waist up, slash there, and elongate the more you need to, and fix the dart to the original point. So you have to go straight down. It's the easier way. Still might need some adjustments, but it's the best way. So what is a good surgery for someone who has never worked with a lot? Or is a surgery foot for a sewing machine just as handy? I used the surgery foot for the sewing machine only once for that video, and it really, really worked. If you don't have the space for a surgery or you are intimidated by one, I suggest you get that foot. I'll put the link in the description. I have a Gritzner 788 for thread serger, but I threaded on it with three because I think four is an overkill. It's very easy. Oh my god. Dirty!
It is very easy to thread. A threading helper here. So it's really, really easy. And it's not an industrial one. So it's quite slow and easy to control. I don't think Gritzner exists anymore, but if you get a singer or a brother one in the same size and category, I think it would be fine. I find serges very easy to use, but they are a pain in the ass to thread. Just keep that in mind. How many sewing machines do you have? I think now I have 20. Would you ever do a tour of a sewing machine? Have you used all of them? Yes, I can arrange a tour of my sewing machines. And no, I have not used all of them. I still have a few that I need to get out, fix, unbox, everything. Did you ever consider doing Bjork's 2091 19 Swan dress? Of course. I love it. It's on white chicks. How can I not do it? It's so fancy. I want it. So what's your favorite item to sew? Dresses. I love dresses. I have a problem. I love dresses. <laughs> what is the weirdest, most unconventional or uncomfortable thing you've ever sewn? Like material-wise. Most unconventional, I would say the Dior paper dress. I was very scared that everything was going to explode and I would end up naked in Paris, but it didn't happen. So it was, that was pretty fun. And the most uncomfortable one was definitely the Selkie dress. It was so hot. It was so plasticky and the texture is so awful. I hated it a lot. Could you maybe show one of your first things you've sewn? I don't think I have it anymore, but for the channel, the first things I did was the trash bag dress and was one of the first videos I've ever posted fashion related. It was a corset with a very ugly skirt. I will redo the skirt, but I didn't have much time. What problems you had with it and which messy way you solved them? The problem was to cut all the trash bags in the same length. So I glued masking tape to the floor upstairs in the room. So I had like a template to cut it and it's still there. I cannot take it off. So I ruined the floor for that ugly ass trash skirt. I love watching other people sew, but when I try, it's hard and intimidating. The thing I struggle the most with is where to cut the fabric and what the grain is and weft. What do you consider when laying out the fabrics or it's just like second nature to you? With the fabrics, I already know it's second nature. I just lay them on the table and I know which way I have to cut to make it work. But with new fabrics, I always test the drape, like just holding and see how the fabric behaves and what the fabric wants to do. Then I will decide in which way to cut it. So I have a lot of fabrics that actually require a Frankenstein grain. It's not a cross grain, it's not a straight grain or, or a bias. It's something in between. So the drape is better, but I don't use those very much because they're so complicated. Where is your favorite place that you look for patterns that you recommend? Mm. Well, since the whole drafting my own pattern started, I don't buy many things anymore, but I go to Amazon for most things. Do I have too much fabric or does everybody has way too many boxes with fabric because they look cute? No, you're not the only one. Quality content right there. Thank you guys so much for sending all the questions and for being part of this amazing community that we're growing together. I'm very happy to have you here. It's time to announce the winner of our nice. beautiful giveaway. I compiled all the names of the people who sent me questions and also so for those who just were interested in the giveaway, not a problem, I considered you as well. Each one of you were assigned a random number and then Google random number generator chose the winners and the respective prizes. So here we go. Drum roll. Brace yourself. The winners. The winner of this slower kit is Erin Rockwell. Congratulations. Now you're going to start sewing your own things. How about that? The winner of the very wonky sewing kit with all the goodies inside is Ramona Lucas. Congratulations to you too. Now you have an utility belt. And the winner of the sewing machine is our own and only Kathy, aka Steve, aka Kathy. Hey guys, congratulations! By the way, Marie, since you asked so nicely, I'm giving you a set of slopers. Congratulations to you too! Congratulations to all the winners. I will be contacting you through Instagram or somewhere else. I'll send the prizes out at the end of this month or in the beginning of February because we're going on vacation again. So I need to make sure I'm home to, to prepare everything accordingly. Thank you so much. So exciting! Thank you so much for watching. I will announce all the winners again on the community tab, so stay tuned for that and I will see you soon. Ta-ta!